shall, shall, shall we play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Getting geeky in Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for tuning in, whether you're listening on 101.1 FM, The Answer, on Saturday, October 26th at 1 p.m., or by podcast, or on YouTube, or on Krypton Radio. One of the many ways that the show goes out after the radio broadcast. I'm just glad you're here. I love radio and podcast and all that cool stuff. This is a pre-recorded show, so uh, don't try to call in. But you can tweet me at Shane Plays, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. And uh, I will you know, always love to get feedback or questions or whatever on the show. Just as a reminder, due to Washita Baptist football, this show is sort of a an anomaly, really, in the middle of a break. We've been off the air for a few weeks due to football. I think last week was a replay because the schedule we were we had thought that the football game was going to be on at one o'clock, but it wasn't on until two, so we replayed the show because it was a last minute thing. Uh, and then uh, Washita Baptist football is going through, I think, to like mid November. And then if they get in the championships, it'll go longer than that. So all that to say, uh, just because you haven't heard us in a few weeks doesn't mean we're really going anywhere. It's just a bit of a hiatus due to football. But fortunately, the way things worked out this Saturday uh, was free to do the show, which works out really well because in a couple of weeks, we've got Arkansas RPG Con. Yes, for the third year. And now... In the vast, expansive space of Sherwood Forest, uh, we are we are uh, we are going to be rolling dice and playing some role playing games in Arkansas, having a lot of fun. And joining me uh, to talk about that, and also we're going to try to just do a little bit of OSR news, OSR RPG news. That's old school rules or old school revival, whoever you, depending on who you talk to, uh, is Carl Heil. Hello. Who, uh, Yes, uh, who who I who I consider just just a darn nice fellow, and uh, he's also uh, the uh, the co-host on a podcast or a couple, I think at least one, no two, <laughs> that I'll give a I give a shout out to here in a second. So, uh, but we're going to be talking about OSR RPG stuff today, and then also getting the lowdown on and getting excited for the third annual Arkansas RPG Con. Uh, which will be on Saturday and Sunday this year. It's the first 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 year that it's two days, so I can't go Saturday, 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 and I can't go Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, I went to Monster Trucks last weekend. Carl, but you so can kind of, still, you can yeah. still the wonderful King of the Hill joke. Sunday, 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 and Saturday. And Saturday is going to be. <laughs> so what is it? Is it is the ninth and tenth or tenth and eleventh November? Ninth uh, and tenth. All right. At Sherwood Forest, which used to be known as Woody Sherwood Forest, very conveniently located in the central Arkansas area. So we will definitely be talking about that during the show. But uh, first, we're going to talk about OSR and, and RPG news. But I wanted to make sure to tell people if they want to know more or if they want to sign up or see what games are going to be played or get their badge or whatever, uh, where, where do they go, Carl? They go to www.arpgcon.com. That's right. AR standing for Arkansas, not Arizona. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A-R-R-P-G-Con.com, right? No, A-R-P-G. A-R-P-G-Con.com. See? <laughs> See how I intentionally messed it up to give you a chance to, <laughs> to highlight that again? So ARPGCon.com, Arkansas RPG Con. I also encourage you to follow the posts on Facebook. Uh, what kind of games you got shaping up? It's a great, fantastic mix of old school and new school gaming, uh, which is always uh, something I'm excited to see. I love all kinds of games. Yes, and sir. we have everything from 1974 Dungeons and Dragons to 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, everything from Call of Cthulhu to uh, 
uh, Delta Green to Dungeon Crawl Classics, and Classic Traveler. I mean, just such a great mix of games. It's and a good mix of games. Uh, it definitely is. And, and my buddy Tony, uh, who, who's been on the show definitely more than once, uh, he's running the Fantasy Trip. And then I, I think he's about 90% committed to running uh, GURPS. Uh, I won't say it's Macross due to copyright issues, but let's just say that it involves uh, uh, Macross-like elements, like uh, giant jets that convert into battle mechs and, and stuff like that. Hmm. So, um, and Tony, Tony's a great GM, one of my favorites. Really looking forward to that. I'm running, I don't know if you remember, Carl, but we were at North Texas RPG Con, and I was interviewing Mike and Elizabeth Stewart of uh, Victorious RPG fame, mm -hmm. and... They were like, "Oh yeah, we've got a we've got a, a uh, conflict. We can't be there this time." And I said, "Well, I'll run Victorious," and and you and I were like, "We're going to make that happen." So I'm planning on running Victorious, uh, which is steampunk superheroes in the Victorian area, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, there's there's some really cool stuff lined up. So a r p g con dot com. Go there or be square. November 9th and 10th, Sherwood Forest. Uh, how much? How much is the two day? How much is it? Is it to get in there for all that goodness? <laughs> well, we were uh, lucky enough to be able to offer our two day badges at the same cost as our badges were last year. So it's still just twenty dollars. And we had thought about doing an early bird pricing and raising the prices closer to the event. But, you know, I don't want anybody to feel like they're not going to be able to make it because of right. a small monetary uh, shift. So it's going to stay $20. It's going to be $20 for the uh, two-day event. I love it. That, that makes me happy in, 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 in deep and uh, abiding ways. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be there both days. Uh, you know, I, I, there's plenty of games I want to get in on. I, I, wanna, I didn't get a chance to play Classic Traveler last year. So, uh, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll talk about ARPGCon.com uh, and the con itself in, uh, later, later in, the, uh, in the show. So, I, what, we, what I thought would be fun, because you and I are, are both OSR, old school rules, um, old school revival, what you want to call it, kind of guys. <laughs> uh, you know, and I mean, I, I would say that you're probably deeper into that part of the hobby than I am, but I love it. You know, I, I, I definitely love me an old school game, whether it's a genuine old school game or a newer game designed to feel old school. So we, we thought it'd be fun to uh, grab some news items, talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in the world of, of OSR gaming, OSR tabletop gaming, uh, before we, uh, you know, did a deeper dive on Arkansas RPG Con. Before I did do that, uh, I do want to give a shout out to a couple of podcasts uh one would be uh the crusader podcast which uh carl is a co-host on it's dm carl and dm crispy no not who's on who's on that's uh that's <laughs> well, save that, or die yeah, yeah who's yeah. on who's on the crusader with you so the crusader uh it's a podcast that was started by ck jesse uh so it'd be ck for the crusader because we're right, castle, castle keepers. keeper right um uh, but uh, yes, um, it is Jesse and myself. Uh, Tyler Morrison was a uh, Tylermo was a co-host for many episodes. He had to step yep. away due to some other conflict. He's a busy, busy guy. Podcasting um, takes more time than people realize, right? And um, yep. I mean, because there's all this research that you have to do beforehand when you want to talk intelligently about a product. Uh, yeah, but we were, or very you could just be like me and just jump out not even knowing <laughs> if your rip cord is in place or not so I, i've done that a few times <laughs> yeah i've done that more than once i do like to research though and then you know it, it generally comes off as a better podcast when you i have to ask this about tyler Mo, tyler morrison i i was devastated to see that he cut his beard was that was that photoshopped or does he has he really trimmed his beard because he had this really? amazing like 
Tolkien level beard for a long time. <laughs> I believe that if it's photoshopped, it's still uh, a trick for me. <laughs> yeah, I okay. have not been told that it has uh, been a, a image fakery. Okay, um, so he really trimmed that beard. Huh? I believe so. Yeah, that was a, that was an epic beard, man. <laughs> so uh, so Tyler right. had to leave, but we were fortunate enough we reached out to uh, the aforementioned Liz and Mike Stewart, and they have joined the show full time now. So which is good because they've been with. Uh, Lord Games, not as employees, but as fans, and they, you know, they Troll Lord published their uh, victorious RPG, and I think Mike's written some modules for Castles of Crusades and stuff. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah, and just if people don't know, the Crusader is the podcast. Is it official or is it unofficial podcast for Troll Lord Games? It is a fan podcast. Um, it's a fan podcast, but it's very... closely associated. Yes, and they've been very supportive of us. We love the trolls, right. and they've been uh, really good to us right. and, and helped us out anytime we've needed interviews or to talk to anybody. Um, but it is still it's definitely a fan podcast. And, and that's you know has yeah. its benefits, being a fan podcast, because you get the real um, uh, reactions from fans, whether they right. be uh, positive or negative. And so we don't want it to be feel like we're just, shilling troll lord products to you right we are fans you. of this and there are absolute great reasons to love castles and crusades and sure. the other troll lord products right okay well uh so the crusader is is the official podcast of troll lord games uh which is castles of crusades and amazing adventures and victorious and 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 other uh products so i want to give a shout out there i was going to give a shout out anyway but this it's a nice tie-in here to uh the save for half podcast that mike and elizabeth stewart of victorious fame and also the crusader podcast is co-host they are one half of four hosts co-host of the save for half podcast and they they have a, a great podcast that i've been enjoying very much i started listening because i met uh them at uh, North Tech. I met them briefly at the last Arkansas RPG Con, Arkansas RPG Con, but I really got to meet them and sit down and talk with them at North Texas in June. I've been listening to their podcast. It is a heck of a good podcast. It's the Save for Half podcast, and they cover old school games and modern games expi uh, not expired, inspired mm -hmm. by them. Now, they 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 kind of just put episodes out periodically. They're not on any set schedule, but every episode is good. Uh, and the last two episodes, they covered the Flash Gordon game from, I think, 76 or 77 from Fantasy Games Unlimited. And before that, they covered the Rocky and Bullwinkle role-playing game from TSR in the late 80s. Uh, but, of course, they, they cover other old school games, you know, champions and, and, uh, I mean, they are no strangers to fantasy gaming or anything like that. So I definitely want to give a shout out, listen to the safe for half podcast. I enjoy it very much. And then last but never least, Carl here, DM Carl is one half of the co-hosts with DM crispy of the Saver die podcast, which is very OSR focused. And in fact, Mike and Liz, Elizabeth, uh, Stuart used to be coast on save or you coast used to be co-hosts on uh, the save or die podcast. If I remember correctly. Yes. It's, yeah. it's, it's a little bit confusing. There's a lot it of uh, wires going across each other and they're kind of all good. Tangled yeah. web that we've woven. Oh, um, that we've woven. But... <laughs> yeah. So what? Okay. So get real elevate. If I, you've got one floor on an elevator to tell me what, uh, Save or Die podcast is. So Save or Die is very specific in its subject. It is about basic and original Dungeons and Dragons. Pretty much any old school Dungeons and Dragons that wasn't advanced. So um, it's a very focused uh, subject. Um, and I do want to mention uh, that we have been joined by a third host, uh, PC Courtney. My wife is now a full-time host on Save or Die. So she's a PC, not a DM. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So if you ever get like a bot, like an artificial intelligence, will it be will it be NPC whoever? <laughs> is, is that is that how it's going to work? Yeah, we're going to hook up Alexa to. <laughs> yeah, that's to a it. Mic. NPC N NPC Alexa is here. <laughs> so that's great. All right, so um, all right, so moving right along, 
Well, I want to talk uh, about some OSR news or tidbits. I'm going to let you uh, jump on out there because uh, it sounds like I've got some stuff that I can talk about, but it sounds like you've got two or three news items as well. So I why do. don't you take us into the first OSR tidbit that you would like to share with us, sir? All right. The first uh, OSR uh, tidbit, and this has uh, uh, somewhat to do with uh, Trollord Games. One of the uh, people that work at Trollord Games, Jason Vey, also runs his own game company called Elf Layer Games. And they have a Kickstarter currently going. It's called Night Shift Veterans of the Supernatural Wars. And uh, Jason Vey is just has a great mind for mechanics. He's a great game designer. Uh, he uh, is the author of Amazing Adventures, uh, a fantastic game from um, Troll Lord Games that we yeah, have. Yeah, that's about like on Pulp Adventures. Yeah, it's it's like a Pulp Adventures type of RPG. Yeah, and it's really right. it, you know it's it, it can handle really anything. Like it it's yeah. it's kind of got that feel to it, but it could handle fantasy it can handle it can handle pretty much anything it's built on the castle and crusade system it's 100 percent compatible uh, so it's on it's on the uh i always want to say sage but it's the siege engine yes the siege okay. engine. yes exactly okay. all right um but yeah night shift is a um urban horror game so kind of think about buffy the vampire slayer supernatural those types of of you know shows and stories that's what you'd be telling with night shift and it is currently on Kickstarter. If you are catching this as a podcast, pause, pause the podcast and go now. And run it and go and go support. <laughs> so what, what, where's the OSR angle on here? Well, it's um, uh, uh, Jason Faye is a super duper OSR guy. Uh, right. And it is a new kind of um, uh, OSR based I'm gonna look, system. I'm going to look it up right now. Ogres. It's Night Shift. Ogres? Ogres. Ogres. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. Okay. Get out. <laughs> Ogres. I like it. It's catchy. Yeah. Um yeah. and uh yeah, it's definitely um got an old school feel to the mechanics to it. He talks a little bit about that in the Kickstarter video. Uh but uh it is not a retro clone for sure, right? It is definitely its own thing, but it has an uh an, an old school uh, look and feel to it uh, for uh, the the way the system runs. Okay, well, and that's fair enough. Like, OSR is, some people would argue this because there's different camps, as with any hobby that people mm -hmm. are passionate about. There's different camps within the hobby. I feel like OSR is anything that is either, like you said, a retro clone, which is basically, you know, cloning, but tweaking, maybe streamlining or fixing so th things of, of like a game from the 70s or 80s or whatever or it 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 must feel like you're playing an old school game uh, and to me that's osr so I, I would say this fits yeah i'm looking right now let's see he's got uh eight days to go he's got about 2500 dollars to go uh elf layer games presents a, hor a horror urban fantasy rpg by two industry veterans who's the other person working on him with him do you know uh, that uh, is Jason ooh, and... uh, Tim. I forget Tim's last name. Uh, I cannot recall. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking ogres. Yeah, it's literally ogres. O period G period R period. Uh, and and it says uh, old school rule sets. This is just a quick thing here. It says a lot of folks have been experimenting with different things to do with quote unquote old school rule sets. Many of these have been on the Kids on Bikes variety, or been of the Kids on Bikes variety, but it occurred to me that you could easily use these rules derived from the earliest forms of tabletop RPGs from the 70s and early 80s to handle just about any kind of game. And we also feel there's a shortage of games on the market dedicated to the kinds of serialized urban fantasy and horror TV shows that are common, when we call it, common in what many are calling the golden age of TV. You know what I want? I want to cold check the Night Stalker game. My goodness. <laughs> I think you could do that with this. Yeah, uh, you pretty, probably pretty could. Easily. Yeah. Uh, it's Timothy Brannon is the other okay. author. And, yeah. um, you know, there's actual conversion charts uh, to convert this to, like, BX and original fantasy games. Right. So uh, it's really right. got some old school in its DNA. Now, um, 
I don't want to. I don't want to speak now. for the project. I, I do yeah. feel like what they're kind of saying is this is not really a game that focuses on narrative storytelling. It's a game that focuses on monsters and survival, right? Which That's, is fine with me, right? <laughs> Let's just kill some monsters and and stuff and roll dice. Uh, I just backed it because I mean I think it's cool. I want to and I like to support Jason. So there you go, Jason. I just threw the hardcover level at you. So awesome. Um, yeah. Thanks for, I didn't know anything about that. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Uh, and I, I was looking, if you go to the Kickstarter page, it gives a uh, an overview of several TV shows that it's inspired by. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, some of these you already mentioned, Carl. Ghosts of Albion, or Albion, however you want to say it. Uh, this is interesting. Doctor Who, Adventures in Time and Space. Mm-hmm. C.J. Carella's Witchcraft, All Flesh Must Be Eaten, Nightbane. Oh, no, 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 no. This is where they're, uh, this is where what Jason Vay and Timothy Brennan have worked on. Uh, mm-hmm. Amazing Adventure, there's lower, hold on, let me find the, uh, well, darn it all, I, I saw it earlier. Um, I'll flail around, even though this is pre-recorded, as if it's live radio. So, uh <laughs> Yeah, I think I got confused. I think I saw that list and assumed that it was because they were talking about TV shows. But I will say, uh, the other thing I'll say is, is there are three mechanics at play in the Ogre system. Percentile check, D20 check, and the rule of two. And for those that, that people that, that intrigues you, there's more explanation <laughs> on the Kickstarter page. So. so by the time I got the podcast version of the show out, the uh, Kickstarter actually ended however they did successfully fund so congratulations to jason bay and his partner and i look forward to getting all supernatural and stuff okay well i've got uh that's a great find i'll definitely put that in the show notes there um uh you are sg carl show guest carl sg carl so since it's since some podcast evidently uh, we have you have to either be either a CK or a DM or a PC. You're an SG, <laughs> SG Carl. So this is interesting. Uh, I was actually in uh, the Discord for Morris's tabletop RPG podcast, and a guy popped in and was talking, and he mentioned one of his projects that he's working on, and it's called Dread. Now don't confuse this with the Dread that you play with a Jenga game as the as the mechanic uh but this is it's d period r period e period a period d period and it's and that stands for dangerously rare elixirs and uh decoctions which is 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 a perfect example of when you have a cool acronym and then you, <laughs> you and then you find stuff to make it fit right so what what what's in what's interesting on this is now it's 5e this is a setting and uh expansion alternative ways to play however you want to put it for D 5e but it's intended to bring an osr flavor to 5e uh for example uh one of the things he's tinkering with is like in a lot of old school and in old school D and D, every gold piece you found was an experience point. So that's one of the things that he's playing around with here. Mm-hmm. He's capping levels uh, on characters. Uh, he also wants to use monsters as basic gr- ingredients for alchemy. Uh, and then, so it, there's kind of a couple of things going on here. Uh, he wants it to make it feel like a uh, give because five E. Some people would make the argument that it's overpowered out the gate. I, I don't know if I make that argument, but uh, you know, used to in you know D and D, like you could roll up your character and die in the first fight, really easy. So he's he's kind of trying to uh, kind of tinker with that, but then also add some new stuff. So he's got the gold as XP. He's kind of lowering the level of things to make things more challenging. Uh, but then he's introducing this alchemy concept and you use alchemy as a way to overcome level caps. So, uh, 
you know, if that if that interests anybody at all, uh, you know, the, the link will be in the show notes. Um, and people can go check it out. He's got a whole blog here talking about it. Uh, and it, and it doesn't, in my opinion, like when you go to the, when you go to the, the blog here, it's on, uh, on blogspot.com. It's, it's O S R dread, D R E A D dot blogspot.com. Hmm. Uh, and that's, that's the thing. But to me, like the description doesn't necessarily jump out as, you know, uh, what he's talking about the statement on game design and intention, uh, as OSR, but the way he explained it to me was that he's trying to OSR a Phi five E if, if that makes any sense. So, um, yeah. yeah, so there you go. Uh, it, it's kind of, uh, kind of, and then he's also the blog itself. Uh, he does reviews of OSR like modules and products and stuff like that. If you go to the main page of the blog. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I, I love gold as XP. I think it's funny yeah. how people uh, have this visceral reaction to the idea of gold as XP as unrealistic, but they don't have that reaction to like killing monsters as XP. Like that, there's no real, right. there's no real reason why your wizard should be able to learn more spills because he killed a monster. <laughs> you know? Well, but yeah. If you, if you if you want to put a common sense thing on D and D, which I don't. You know, right. it's, it's, it's a rule set, not a reality simulator, right? But it's it's it, okay. But if we wanted to go down that way, really, the more you kill of the same monster, the less XP you should get for it. Well, my right? argument for gold as XP is: right. if you are playing treasure hunters, mm -hmm. what better way to measure growth than hunting mm -hmm. treasure? You know, the right. more treasure you find, the better of a treasure hunter you are. There you go. That's right. And, and, you know, another thing, I have no problem with the fact that, you know, D&D &D for many, many years, I would say 20 years almost or something, but especially those first 10 years and so, or so, was a power fantasy. <laughs> you know, how powerful can I get? How, how far up the curve can I get? It wasn't, now I'm, I'm, I know for a fact that there were people doing good storytelling. I'm not saying they weren't. And occasionally we did good story killing. But it was much more about kick down the doors, kill crap, and get more powerful so you can kick down other doors and kill more powerful crap. Right? That's that's what it was uh, for a 13-year-old boy. You did, do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, I don't have any problem with it being that. Uh, even though, like, as, as the past couple of decades have shown, I mean... Tabletop role playing can be so much more than that, but at its at its at its beginnings, it was codified power fantasy, for the most part. Mm -hmm. So you're you're being yeah, very quiet. I, I so think, do you disagree? I, think, uh, I don't necessarily disagree. I do think yeah. um, really it's it's this it's the climb, right? It's this right. progress from zero to hero. So like it's almost feels more power fantasy now when you start out with like. 15 hit points extra. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's like, okay. yeah. it's like you started out, you weren't powerful at all. Like you were actually quite crumbly. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. So, um, so I do think there is definitely some of that. I mean, you can find early uh, talks about Dungeons and Dragons where they talk about who, do, who doesn't want to be the big strong warrior. Um, so, I mean, and, and, you know, being a wizard and being able to alter the fabric of space and time. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that, it's moved away from that. I do think that's still an element of the game. I think there's still people who play it to get this kind of sense of like uh, interacting in the world in a meaningful and powerful way. I think that's honestly why we play games in the first place because we we get this sense of of uh, uh, catharsis of like making mm -hmm. the correct decision and having the right outcome, which life barely ever provides to you. Correct. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, I guess to circle back to my original point, I, I well to agree with you, I'll just say I got no problem with gold. Every gold <laughs> you find being XP, big pile of gold, big pile of XP. I'm fine with it. If you want, is that monster a walking bag of XP? I'm okay with that. So <laughs> I'm okay with your. I'm okay with with killing stuff for the pure enjoyment of getting more powerful and getting loot. Just like I'm okay with a campaign being an opening delicate flower of narrative rarity. I'm fine with both. 
Uh, you know, uh, but, but there's some people that they only want it to be one way or the other. But but anyway, I will not rant. Uh, <laughs> next, you have another item. Lay your item on. I us. do. This is a fun one. There's not right. there's not a lot of meat on this bone. I'm afraid to tell you, but Target has released their 2019 holiday toy catalog. And the reason this is OSR is because you used to be able to find D&D box sets in Sears catalogs. Well, now you can find them in Target catalogs. The D&D box set made the 2019 toy catalog from Target. Isn't that and incredible? I, I love that because some of my biggest feels that I get are when people post on social media like a photo from like an 80s toy catalog or mm-hmm. something. Because, I mean, when I was a kid, that was a big deal. Look through the catalog and circle what you wanted for Christmas and all that. And I love looking over that stuff. But, yes, I know exactly what Target... I got... We got our catalog like a day or two ago. And it, instead of it being a big, huge, like, Sears phone book catalog, it's it's just... It's a thinner catalog, mm-hmm. but it's toys. It's all toys. And I saw that. I was like, oh, I'm so glad they're doing that. And my wife and I actually spent... A couple of minutes talking about how much we love looking through toy catalogs when we were kids. So I did not look through it to and see the D and D box set, but I love the fact that it's in there. Yeah, it's hidden on uh, page thirty-eight, right? <laughs> well, that's Up in fine. the corner, but I mean, uh, yeah, just crazy to 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 see it come so full circle. The popularity of the game today mirrors so much the popularity in the early to mid eighties. It uh, really does. Yeah, it really does. It's it's interesting, you just, know. Just waiting on that cartoon. As soon as we Yeah, I am waiting on that cartoon. <laughs> That's right. Uh I don't know if I did I ever talk did we you and I ever get a chance to talk about that uh the Brazilian car commercial? Oh where it's they did so the good. live action. That was so good. Um you know, I was talking with somebody the other day. I mean, I've mentioned more than once I got feels when they made it home. Mm-hmm. In that cartoon, it was so well done. The only the mm-hmm. only thing that cartoon messed up, or the uh, not the cartoon, but the commercial messed up, in my opinion, was they all showed off their the powers of their magical weapons. Mm-hmm. And Sheila, you know, the one that has the hood, you put the hood up, and she goes invisible on the cloak. I, I guess they couldn't figure out when for her to demonstrate her uh, power, so they all pile in the SUV or crossover, or whatever that was. And after she's in the back seat, then she pulls her head up, her hood up, and disappears. And I'm like, that was odd. <laughs> but I guess they they couldn't figure out when to show it, so they showed it then. So I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, okay, well that's good. I think that's a good OSR ish OSR feels that there's a toy catalog with with D and D box sets. I think that is freaking great. So uh, just to be quite honest about it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let me see. I've got another news item here or a tidbit, OSR tidbit. I wanted to give a shout out um, and say that I'm I'm pretty excited that uh, that the Lost City of Gax... I mean, we knew the Lost City of Gax one was going to fund, right? Because it came out the gate strong. But I'm, I'm excited that they did it in the first place uh, for 5e. Uh, and, 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 and that it did so well. I mean, it, it really funded at a high level. Mm-hmm. So I guess it could be argued that it's, it's not OSR cause it's for 5e, but I would argue otherwise that it's OSR type storytelling that you can do in 5e. Yeah. I do think there's something to the, the module design of old school right. in that it's not, it's not giving you a narrative to tell. It's giving you an environment to explore. Right. Uh, there's a town and then there's there's stuff to explore around the town. Yeah. And instead of saying uh, on day three, this person will come out as the villain. It just tells you that person's villainous. And that's just part of the environment. You know, the, the priest is actually a villainous agent of chaos. Do with that what you will do as yeah, a do dungeon with, master. Yeah. Well, and of course, it was designed by two of the sons of Gary Gygax, correct? I mean, yeah. that's pretty, I mean, that's old school. I, I don't know how much more old school it gets to that. I mean, you know, these kids played in some of the original D&D games, right? I mean, you know, way back in the day. So I, th- I think that that's pretty 
darn cool. So uh, just wanted to give a shout out to that, waiting on that to come in. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So have you played any of the other versions of the Lost City of Gaxmore? I have not. I have not okay. played the Castle and Crusades version or the uh, the 3.5 version. Uh, I I've, I was barely aware of their existence. The Kickstarter kind of like put that more on my radar. I see. Okay. Uh, you know, and yeah, and I just want to give a shout out. We've mentioned Troll Lord Games and Castles and Crusades several times. They were one of the original OSR games. Uh, they when when the when the OGL came out for D and D three point five, they were one of the first to jump out there. Yeah. Way before anybody else did it. You know, so it was it was whole, yeah. all new ground. It, it was they, it was them and Chris Gonerman. I don't know if you're familiar with that name. I'm not. Tell me uh, about that. Uh, basic fantasy role playing game. Uh, they that was um, uh, his project, and they had uh, castles and crusades, and they you know we can just make a game with with what this document this document says. We can just make a game, and it was from those steps that all of these uh, retro clones now exist. Uh, they were the first person to dip their toe into that pool. Ah, pretty cool stuff. So, uh, so it's them. And then of course you had uh, the troll Lords was Steve and Davis Chenault. And so Todd gray. Uh, yeah. Chenault and mm -hmm. gray, uh, uh, Todd gray, Matt golden. Uh, yeah. These are all the people for uh, troll Lord, Mac golden and Davis Chenault were the primary authors of the system for castles and crusades, but lots right. of people worked on it. Uh, and uh, uh, Mac golden has said on, on multiple occasions that he feels uh, Steven should uh, also be considered an author of that game system. He did a lot of work on it, uh, but he didn't put his name on there <laughs> so, right. for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, his name's all over almost everything else. And would not, I mean, I, I wasn't there at the beginning, but I've interacted a lot with troll Lord for the past three or four years. There would not be a troll Lord right now without Steven. I'll tell you that he's a great he's, guy. Yeah. He's he's the eight-handed octopus trying to run everything over there. So uh, he's a lot of he's a fun guy, uh, and we 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 have a an, an announcement uh, related to Arkansas RPG Con that uh, we'll we'll save for uh, for that portion. So make sure to keep listening to that. Talking about retro clones, I just wanted to share with you because I think you've told me you've mentioned Swords and Wizardry to me before. Because we've mm -hmm. talked about, you know, game systems that are OSR and also good game systems to run with kids. And I think you run sort of a scaled down version of Swords and Wizardry or there's like a Swords and Wizardry light, I think. That's correct. Right, that you've used with kids. Well, I don't know if you remember, but a few months ago, Humble Bundle ran an OSR old school gaming bundle. Mm -hmm. And I grabbed all of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and absolutely. it it had a whole lot of stuff for Swords and Wizardry. And I got really excited. I didn't realize what Swords and Wizardry was till I started looking through it. And it's it's like if somebody had written basic expert now, right? Like like with in quote unquote fix the flaws or whatever or with, with the not fix the flaws with the benefit of hindsight wrote what it would have been mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah it's it's so it stems from uh the 1974 box sets od right and so does, oh it's so od does, indeed so does basic okay. expert right basic oh. expert is a continuation of those 1974 box sets so they're they look similar because of that but uh there's a couple of differences uh there's way more options in core and complete well, there's more. Uh, there's sword, more classes. There's more classes. Yeah. There's more races, and it's a racing class separation, which BX does not have. In BX, you are a dwarf or a fighter. In Swords of Wizardry, you're a dwarven fighter or a dwarven thief or whatever. Yeah, if you want, if you want to be a fighter, desires. magic. If you want to be a fighter, magic user in BX, you got to be an elf. Right. Right. So right. it's so, there. There is yeah. there is definitely some differences uh, from BX, but they definitely are built on that same core. Now, Swords and Wizardry is a cleaned up, more presentable. Uh, version of the 1974 game uh, and it does some stuff with the rules that are really uh, really cool really uh, cool ideas like single saving throw it has a single saving throw as opposed to a matrix and that uh, single saving throw is modified by racing class decisions well I I definitely want to play it 
Like, you know, I just didn't really get a sense of it until I said, until I actually got the PDFs uh, from that humble bundle. And I started, I was like, this is totally cool. So would you say that uh, Swords and Wizardry is a good, like if, if somebody's never played a retro clone, uh, which I've played one or two or read through them or whatever, uh, you know, I've, I've played Dungeon Crawl and, and stuff like that, but would you say Swords and Wizardry is a good uh, retro clone to start with if people are interested in that kind of thing? Absolutely. I think um, uh, Swords and Wizardry is a great place to start, especially if you're coming from a modern viewpoint. Castle and Crusades would be also another fantastic option. Both of those provide you with Ascending Armor Class, and for some reason, Descending Armor Class is the bane of the modern gamer. They don't like it. Yeah, they just uh, can't deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, nope, not going to do that. Yeah. Um, Swords and Wizardry provides both, so you can play with either uh, Descending or Ascending. It's 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 a uh, uh, it's there's v multiple versions. Uh, many of them are streamed down. Swords and Wizardry Lite, like you mentioned, is just a uh, four page document and uh you can get them uh from, four from, pages yes four pages goes to level three uh i run it all the time i think it's fantastic and and they um they provide those at conventions and in fact at arkansas rpg con every attendee will get a swords and wizardry light document now are you running your kids game at you know what save that we're about to get us to a sure, break sure 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 when we come back, we're going to talk about Arkansas RPG Con, which it is not OSR exclusive, but it is incredibly OSR friendly. So, uh, so if you if you're if you're in the Arkansas area, or you know even nearby, or or just don't mind driving or whatever, and you wanna and you wanna roll some dice and some OSR gaming, Arkansas RPG Con is is one of the good cons out there to do that at. Uh, you know, there's a few of them out there that are really good. Uh, and then Arkansas, you know, our, ours here in Arkansas is good and it's ours. It's Arkansas. So <laughs> come check it out and support it. So I'm going to get us over to a break. Uh, we come back. We're going to talk a bit more about Arkansas RPG Con, which is November 9th and 10th. Is there anything else OSR wise that you would like to mumble, expound or tell war stories upon before I get mm -hmm. us to a break? One more news item I really yes. want to share. Sure. Uh, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, the Xenopus Archives is a fantastic blog that focuses only on Holmes Basic Dungeons and Dragons, which was the first basic box set that came out before right. the Moldvay Cook. It was in 1977. Uh, and Holmes Basic Dungeons and Dragons is famous for a lot of things, uh, one of them being its fantastic sample dungeon. Uh, one of the first sample dungeons in the uh, history of Dungeons and Dragons. It is a full giant dungeon with all sorts of crazy stuff in it. Right. What's, what's its the giant... name of this? What's the name of this place again? The name of this place is uh, the Tower of Xenopus. The ta How do you spell Xenopus? Oh, 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 sorry. You're saying the block. The Xenopus yeah. Archives is the name of the block. All right. How do you spell it? Uh, Z E N O -E? Okay. P U S. Okay, got it. Archives okay. at dot blogspot dot com. Okay, you were saying that the Tower of Xenopus is full of all kinds of crazy stuff, including a big dot 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 in the nine. Giant here. octopus. A yes. giant octopus. I love it. Which, I mean, a, a sample dungeon with a giant octopus in it, unheard of. But they did yes. it in 1977. Uh, I love uh, it. With all sorts of other crazy stuff going on. And um, the uh, the writer behind the Xenopus So, archive, wait, well, hold on. Is the is the Xenopus, is that the octopus? The giant octopus is called the Xenopus? No, the Z Xenopus okay. is the uh, evil wizard uh, oh, okay. who was previously uh, inhabiting the tower. Um, okay. So, uh, Zach Howard, who is the author of the Xenopus Archives, is working on a fifth edition conversion into the ruins of the Tower of Xenopus, and that's going to be available through uh, the DMs Guild uh, shortly. So, I'm very excited to see that. Uh, I think he's a great guy. His blog is w wonderfully fascinating. One of the great historians of uh, Dungeons and Dragons. All right, I'm looking at it right now, and it feels wonderfully old school right out the gate the minute you land on the blog uh <laughs> it's it's got a lizard man riding a giant lizard which hey, if that doesn't get you excited 
in 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 wonderful black and white sketchy artwork uh and it's got a it's got a picture of that um uh Holmes basic right there right there so Holmes basic was the version what was that the one where they were having trouble getting their hands on dice so some of them came with little paper chits as your randomizer that is correct yeah yeah I love it so all right cool all right so Xenopus archives dot blogspot dot com and if you go to the tower of Xenopus be prepared for a giant octopus so all right very cool <laughs> So as a final OSR news item, I actually had this lined up during the show as Carl and I were recording, and then I completely forgot to bring it up. So uh, adding this as a as a quick footnote to the podcast version, there is a blog out there called osrnews.blogspot.com, and one of the things they do is they do a weekly thing where it says new OSR products at DTRPG, DTRPG, of course, being drive through RPG, and their blog post on October 21st contained this item, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, old School Essentials, which is a retro clone uh, for, you know, old school D&D. Uh, it's Old School Essentials Classic Fantasy, and they released a couple of documents for free one of them is their their genre rules, um, and and the other one was the cleric and magic user spells, uh, and and this is the plain text versions of these documents or these books or whatever. You can get the PDF versions on Drive Through RPG for you know like six or seven bucks or something like that. But for these two things, the genre rules and the uh, what was the the cleric and magic user spells they released it as plain text uh, rtf uh, file plain text and with the note that it's provided as an aid to others who wish to create their own house rules documents or retro clones uh, which is pretty neat of them so and that's from necrotic gnome is the company or person or team or whatever behind old school essential classic fantasy so i'll put those notes uh, into the show notes, and uh, now that that finally puts a pin, uh, fork whatever in this week's OSR news chat, and we'll move on with the rest of the show. All right. Well, I'm going to get us to a break, and when uh, we get back, we're going to be talking more with Carl about Arkansas RPG Con, uh, which is uh, where you can roll some dice right here in the diamond state and uh, the natural state and uh, and get your tabletop RPG on when we get back on Shane Plays Geek Talk. Comic book lovers, visit thewildstars.com today. today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci-fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone. This is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. Are you a fan of thrilling adventure, daring suspense, and just a touch of romance? Cursova has you covered. Since 2016, Cursova has been publishing the very best in contemporary fantasy and science fiction, retro pulp, and for you D&D gamers, Appendix N style fiction. Based in Little Rock, you can pick up their flagship magazine locally or at Michael Tierney's The Comic Book Store on Treasure Hill Road or Collector's Edition on JFK in North Little Rock. Swing by one of Michael's stores and pick up an issue or find them on Amazon. C-I-R-S-O-V-A. Not doesn't start with a K, it starts with a C. C-I-R-S-O-V-A, Cursova Magazine. Check them out today. 
you want to go ahead and throw out some love to Game Goblins. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40k, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all of your gaming needs, I hardly recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. And folks, if you do visit any of my sponsors, please tell them that you hear about them on the show. That helps them know uh, that their advertising money and the relationship we've built is, is time and money well spent. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. Welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks, I'm joined by Carl Heil, who is uh, the founder and coordinator of Arkansas RPG Con and also the co-host of on the Crusader podcast and the Save or Die podcast, which are both old school rules, old school survi- survival, old school revival, however you want to call it, uh, OSR tabletop RPG gaming focused podcast, and then the Arkansas RPG Con is it's it's not OSR exclusive, but it's very OSR friendly. It's also the I think it's the only real RPG Con we have in Central Arkansas, unless I'm completely confused uh there are definitely other conventions that have rpg events but they are not rpg cons they are comic cons they are general nerd friendly conventions that have some sort of rpg circuit with them uh this is just role-playing games that's all we do at arkansas rpg con right tabletop role-playing games uh arkansas rpg con november 9th and 10th Woody's not well. I always want to say Woody Sherwood Forest at Sherwood Forest in Sherwood, Arkansas. It's the Sherwood Forest uh, Event Center. Plenty of space, plenty of room for all that gaming goodness. And I'm sure, like previous years, there's going to be lots of good games, lots of good vendors. You can go to arpgcon.com uh, and uh, sign up, see what games are running, si- propose an event, say, hey, I would like to run a game. I myself will be running Victorious, which is the steampunk superheroes in the Victorian area game by Mike and Elizabeth Stewart through Troll Lord Games. And I hope to be playing in others like, I think, Vampire 5th Edition, the Old School Traveler, GURPS. There's plenty of stuff I want to play in. But I wanted, there's, there's a big announcement that I saw on Facebook, which is actually really big news, not only for OSR gaming but for uh central arkansas gaming since it involves the central arkansas gaming company what is that big announcement for for this year's uh arkansas rpg con there carl troll lord games will be at arkansas rpg con 2019 they'll have a booth there you can go up and talk to them about their adventures in the game industry um, hopefully we'll get uh, some of them to run some games. It's it's very exciting. They're going to be uh, hot off of uh, uh, Game Hole Con, so I'm sure they'll be tired. Right. <laughs> but they're, yeah. they're, they're showing up, so I appreciate them so much for making uh, an appearance. Well, now, I know last year, uh, you know, you worked out, uh, taught, reached out to them and displayed some product for them. Uh, but this is a big deal, one, because it's cool to have them there. Uh, you know, it's actual, I mean, they've been around They're they're, they've mm-hmm. earned their stripes. They're a full on RPG company, publishing company. But on top of that, they used to have a fondly remembered con around here called uh, Trollcon. And I often hear people saying, I wish that Trollcon would come back. Well, here's the next best thing. Mm-hmm. Troller games will be at Arkansas RPG con. So that is super cool. Yeah. Trollcon uh, was the first, uh, convention of any kind. 
that I ever went to. Uh, so it's it's great to uh, have them here now at uh, our convention at Arkansas RPG Con. It's very cool. The, the circle closes. I love it. So uh, the other thing that uh, I wanted to make sure not to explore or make sure not to forget to explore since I brought it up earlier and they said, no, 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 we'll wait. Uh, you, you normally run at conventions you go to, especially at RPG Con or Arkansas RPG Con, you'll run a kid's game. So are you going to be doing that again this year? Yes, I will be okay. running two kids games, one Saturday and one Sunday. Uh, I will be using Swords and Wizardry Light, which is a stripped down version of old school D&D that's contained on a four page fold out. And Frog God Games, in support of Arkansas RPG Con, has sent us enough of those, unless we just blow through ticket sales like crazy, enough right. of those to hand out to every attendee. If you come to Arkansas RPG Con, you will be getting a copy of Swords and Wizardry Light uh, just through the door. Nice. So, yeah, the, I will say that you're the swag bag at the last two Arkansas RPG cons has exceeded a lot of larger cons that I've been to. The swag bag has been good. Um, you know, there, and I'm sure it's in no small part uh, due to, and I can't even believe, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank here because I've had him on the show more than once. Real nice. Is it Justin? Um, Jared Nielsen. Jared. Uh, has- yeah. I can't believe I blanked on that. Yeah. Uh, Jared Nielsen of uh, Myth Horde or World of Game Design uh, has been involved with Arkansas RPG Con from the very beginning, uh, just like you, Shane, have been involved. And also, I do want to mention our other big sponsor, Theater Elf, uh, of a, a gamer, a local gamer. Uh, that yeah, they they like to be a bit circumspect, right? Mm, yes, yes, yeah. very mysterious yeah. theater elf. Uh, but yeah, yes. uh, Jared with World of Game Design will uh, be at That's Arkansas it. RPG Con yeah. 2019, just like he's been there the last two years. He's been involved from the very beginning. He's a fun guy. Does yeah. incredible stuff. Uh, uh, does a lot of uh, scenic uh, casting. Uh, that We've had resin casting at uh, the past two cons. Uh, he's provided stuff for our swag bags. And, uh, you know, even the fact that we had a swag bag at our first con surprised people. Uh, you know, because it was... It's a good very, swag bag. Yeah. I've, I've still got both <laughs> of my swag bags for the past two years, and they're good. <laughs> it's a good swag bag. You get little, like, one-page adventures and all kinds of stuff in there. So, um, now, with, now, in past years, Jared has run, like, little workshops where people can come up and learn how to make their own, like, dungeon tiles and stuff. Is, you know, is he going to be doing that again this year? He will be running some events. I do not have those specifics okay. yet, um, but uh, I imagine there will be some sort of uh, dungeon construction of some kind. And if not, there will be some of the cool game systems that he has uh, been developing uh, on preview at Arkansas RPG Con. Okay, so now last year, I know there was a paint your own mini kind of thing going on. Are you going to be able to do that again this year? Uh, I have looked into it. That was something that was donated by one of our attendees. Uh, they okay. purchased that for the convention. Um, I see. Okay, uh, That was a fantastic thing to have. Uh, I, it's something I was able to provide the first year. It was donated by an attendee the second year. The third year, I do not have confirmation on that uh, at okay. this time. Okay. Well, that's that's not something that is like my jam, but it's a lot of people's jam to paint minis. So mm-hmm. uh, now don't paint your minis with jam, folks, because not only is it kind of sticky and it won't last, but you'll probably attract bugs. I'm just saying. Not a so, lot of pigment. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a little tip from your pal, GM Shane. So, um, and you've got a, you've already got a good spread of games. We're about three weeks out. Two we two and a half? How far yeah, out about are two we? and a half today. Yeah, we're two and a half weeks out. You've already got a good spread of games. Uh and and, and I, I imagine there'll be, you know, a lot of times with this type of thing that uh, there'll be more added. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the closer it gets. Your con so far has a history of like the day or two before the con is when everybody decides to press the doors and get their tickets and show up and everything. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah. So, but there's already a, a really good, 
really good list of, of games there for people to check out of a wide variety of game types. Uh, you know, I haven't looked, have you, is there any, I would like, I, I don't think I'd want to play it ongoing, but I'd like to check out Pathfinder 2 just to experience the, have you, is there any Pathfinder 2 on the schedule? There yet? is. Uh, we do Yay! have uh, Pathfinder 2 uh, in uh, Arkansas RPG Con, and that's exciting to me. I know that's a hot topic right now in the RPG world, and uh, it's great to be able to host all kinds of games, including the latest and greatest from Paizo. Well, yeah, I think that uh, I there's there there are ways I could put it that would be more cynical, but let's just say I'm system <laughs> prom, I'm system promiscuous. I love to try new systems, even if it's just once. I like to see how the system works. I like to um, play with the math of it. I like to well, what were what were they thinking when they did this one, and you know all all that stuff. So uh, let's look at the. Let's look at the schedule real quick. I'm pulling up. Uh, you've got this amazing. It's called a website, uh, and I, I'm on it right now. And it's 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 information you can access right from your own computer or phone, folks. If you go to ARPGCon, not A R R P G Con, but A R P G dot com, uh, A P A R P G Con dot com. Let me say it that way. Uh, and you can check out the event schedule and sign up. 20 bucks gets you both days, Saturday and Sunday. So uh, let's look at, I'm seeing Call of Cthulhu, I'm seeing Classic Traveler, I'm seeing D&D 5e, I'm seeing Delta Green, which is sort of the X-Files meets Call of Cthulhu. Uh, oh, DM Crafty is going to be there with old school Redbox D&D. Now, let, folks, let me tell you about DM Crafty. He has a whole box full of all kinds of cool props and stuff that he will keep whipping out on the table to make the game even more immersive. It's almost like watching, uh, you know, those kind of, and I'm not saying he's running a funny game, but this is a, a, a comparison to make. Carl, do you remember Carrot Top, the comedian Carrot Top? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, okay, I, I immediately understand the comparison. <laughs> yeah, so Carrot Top, if people remember, part of his stage act was he was constantly reaching into this big wooden chest and bringing out uh, props to do stuff with and making his show even more engaging and funny. And that is exactly what DM Crafty does. He, he just has this box full of stuff he'll keep pulling out. Uh, it's it's almost, well, not almost, it is. It's worth just pulling up a chair and parking for a little while and watching him work or watching him play, really. Yeah, he got Monster of the Week. Go ahead. He runs for the entire yeah. day. So yeah. he sits up at the beginning. He runs D&D. You're able to jump in and jump out the entire right. day. And uh, that's a great thing for the convention uh, atmosphere because you can, you know, if you have an hour right. or two hour break between the games that right. you're scheduled for you know what do you do at a convention well you at ours you can go up to dm crafty's table sit down play old school right. red box D, D for an hour and a half and uh still make it to your other game and no problem there you go. yeah he's he's literally on the schedule for 13 hours <laughs> so <laughs> uh yeah so let's so we got dinosaur crawl classics which i'm assuming is like mutant crawl classics but with dinosaurs or dungeon crawl classics but with dinosaurs uh, we got Delta Green again. Let's see what else we got going on here. Um, evidently, there's a game that involves spinners. Oh, no, that's the page loading. Okay. Uh, Battletech City Fight. So that's interesting. Uh, looks like maybe some Battletech miniatures going on. Uh, OD&D. Oh, cool. There's an OD&D game going. Uh, the Sapphire Shrine of the Eleven-Eyed goat demon there you go i mean if, you more, know boy that's D &D than that's, that. <laughs> that's family entertainment at its finest uh pulp cthulhu D, D 5e uh D, D in ravnica so ravnica is a magic the gathering setting vampire the masquerade fifth edition uh, those are the new uh, i would very much like to try that out there's starfinder which is pathfinder in space Dungeon Crawl Classics, is that going to be your sister running that again? Yes, she is, is she running both okay. uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics and Dinosaur Crawl Classics. Okay. Uh, and yeah. uh, uh, there's uh, another DCC variant called Dark Trails, and she'll be running that Yeah, as well. I'm looking at that right now. Yeah, and 
uh, I know at least one person who's interested in that Dark Trails. So, yeah, Dungeon Crawl Classics, Dark Trails. Uh, and then DM Crafty is running again on Sunday. Uh, and then we've got, so DM Crafty is on the, on the schedule twice. Uh, we've got Monster of the Week again, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, Outlaws of Desolation Peak, that's some more Cthulhu action. Worlds Unbound. I'm not familiar with that. Hero City. What is that, I wonder? You know, I I don't have all of the details. My understanding yeah. is this is a system that was kind of homebrewed uh, into okay. existence. Uh, yeah. like a bunch of house rules that became their own system. Uh, so uh, it's uh, maybe the only cool. chance you ever get to play it. <laughs> Worlds Unbound. All right. And then we got Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And then we've got this. I love this because this is going to be two years in a row. I'm running, uh, or not, I'm not. Last year, I ran Star Wars D6, which is the West End Games version from like the 80s and early 90s, maybe mid 90s, D6 version of Star Wars. And then one of the players that I had last year in that, I think it was their first time playing it or they hadn't played it in a while or something like that. Now they're running Star Wars D6 this year. I love that so much. Um, and then I'm going to be running, uh, I know there's going to be some, looks like some GURPS on the schedule. I'm going to be running Victorious, which is uh, a steampunk superhero it's in the Victorian era that's running on Troll Lord's uh, Siege Engine. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be other games on the, on the list. So that just gives kind of an idea of the variety of games. Uh, so we need we need people to come out. We need players. We need GMs. Twenty bucks for two days, uh, Saturday and Sunday. That's a great deal. Once you're in the door, these games don't cost you anything. Uh, the only thing you're going to pay for is if you want something from a vendor. Or are you going to have food trucks again this year? Yes. Both of the okay. food trucks that were there last year have agreed to come back and they will be there for quick lunches right outside the doorway. Right. So there's, you know, and, and it's also if people want to, uh, you know, leave and come back. I mean, it's, it's basically in Sherwood. I mean, there's, you know, plenty of play. You can run to, you could practically walk to Walmart if you need to run over to Walmart and get something, some snacks or something. So, uh, folks, check it out. It's it's uh, a r p g con dot com. Uh, look for Arkansas RPG Con on Facebook. Go to a r p g con dot com uh, and and sign up. Check out the games and uh, come out and have some fun. This will be my third year going. I've been to every one of them so far, and and Carl and I have. Uh, done cross promoted and helped each other out every year. I I, I love having my relationship uh, with you, Carl, and with Arkansas RPG Con. And uh, you know it's it's a, it's a great fit for for Shane plays, and I'm glad we've been able to keep the relationship going. You're super easy to work with. You know you're I, I could vouch for people. Carl's goal here is not to make money off of you. He wants people to come out. And have a good time and play games, and and that's it. So he tries to make it as easy as possible for tabletop role playing games to happen like this in Central Arkansas. So if you like that kind of thing, or if you want to check, if you have you been watching Critical Role or these other live plays, a lot of times these conventions people show up who've been watching it online but have never played. Come on out! These games are designed for uh, people to just sit down and 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 start playing. They're, they're, it's assumed that the people who sit at these tables may not know how the game works. Yeah, I, I think there's yep. a little bit of hesitancy where people think right. if you go to a convention, it's going to be all the experts, right? Mm -mm. And you're going to be mm -mm. encroaching on all the experts doing their expert gaming. But, you know, right. it's no. absolutely welcome uh, for new gamers, uh, uh, yep. first-time gamers. You know, uh, any experience level uh, is absolutely welcome to come in and sit down at a table and play these games. Yeah, come on out, have some fun, uh, and and again, these a, a lot of times when I'm playing a game at a convention, even though I've been playing games, role playing games since like the '80s, it's the first time I've ever played that game. Right. So don't just you know the the characters are normally provided. If not, the GM will work walk you through making a character. But nine times out of the ten, nine times out of the ten, nine times out of ten, you don't you don't even need dice. You just show up and sit down. Absolutely. And the people at the people at the table are going to help you have a good time. 
So uh, the GM is going to make sure that you have a good time. You know, it's Game Master or Dungeon Master, DM, or CK for Castle Keeper or Storyteller. But it's basically, you know, there's somebody there making sure that uh, the game's running and that everybody's having a good time. So Arkansas RPG Con, November 9th and 10th, Sherwood Forest in Sherwood, Arkansas. Arkansas RPG Con. Do you have anything else you want to add to that, Mr. Carl? I think we have it all covered. I just uh, want to thank everybody for the support throughout the last two years and come uh, see us again. And I hope everybody has a good time at Arkansas RPG Con 2019. Woohoo! This is my Rusty showing. I forgot to uh, get my bad joke of the week lined up. I have a bad joke of the week for you. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> sure. I, I, I'm prepared. <laughs> all right. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I see how it is. Okay. Well, you get to do the bad joke of the week then. And then folks, gen- ladies and gentlemen, uh, if, if this week only, <laughs> he'll be here all week. Make sure to tip your bartenders and waitresses. Uh, DM Carl with the bad joke yeah, of the week. this is a bad joke, a nerd right. joke, and okay. arguably a D&D joke. Lay it on me. All right. My friend helped me move the other day. Just my friend. He helped me move the other day. It was a real platonic solid. Man. <laughs> it doesn't, I, doesn't feel good to be on that I, side of it, does it, Shane? <laughs> I, 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 both, I both hate and love you so much at this very moment. That was, uh, that was pretty awful. Yeah, I have a, I have a, I have a, I understand better now the, uh, <laughs> the, the impact of these bad jokes, but I do love it. It's incredibly nerdy. It was a real platonic solid. Platonic solids, of course, are dice, or could be. You know, dice are platonic solids, let's put it that way, but not all platonic solids are dice. So uh, only your friend helped you move, uh, and it was a real platonic solid. I love it. So on that note, (laughs) let's go ahead and end, and I'm going to fall off my chair and go fetal on the floor for a few minutes (laughs) as I process the, uh, the mental anguish to my psyche. Uh, but the, the worse the joke, the better. So you, you're, you've you gone up. I already had a lot of respect for you, Carl. <laughs> yeah, that's a Carl up. Heil original. I made that joke <laughs> up. Oh, did you really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've gone, up, you've gone up even higher in, in, in my, if I will see you at Arkansas RPG Con, if not before. Uh, thanks so much for your time and everything you do for the local gaming community um, and, all, and all that good stuff, my friend. All right. Thank you. This Saturday, for one night only, your life will be changed forever. Saturday. Saturday. Saturday at the Springfield Speedway. 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 Don Crusher Wooder. John the Skunk Tremaine. And the team Tomamatsu Dirt Riding Duck Masters in the year's biggest Monster Truck Rally. One night only. Plus the amazing. The astounding. The unbelievable. Truck Asaurus. 20 tons and four stories of car crunching, fire breathing, prehistoric insanity. Whoa! One night only. One night only. One night only at the Springfield Speedway this Saturday. If you miss this, you'd better be dead or in jail. And if you're in jail, break out. Be there. Be there. Be there. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to Patreon.com dot com slash Shane